Good morning, good morning, good morning again. Another glorious and awesome day, and I've got a swift musing. Actually, it was a midnight musing. I was thinking about it last night, and it was pertaining to Pentecostal power. Think about the day of Pentecost was just a couple days ago, I guess, depending on where you're at. It was either yesterday or a couple days ago. And thinking about the power of God at operation, in operation, in people's lives. And just about how life, you know, they use the term, are you surviving or are you thriving? And I was thinking, well, are you failing? You know, we're talking about life, our lives, your life. Are you failing? Are you suffering? Are you surviving? Are you succeeding? Are you thriving? Or are you living the zoe, that's the, the Greek, probably not pronounced right, the Greek word for for the life given by a god or God's life, the Zoe God kind of life. <clears throat> you know, in John 10.10, 10, Jesus had said, the thief doesn't come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Obviously, he's talking about Satan and all of, as they say, Satan's cohorts, all of the wicked spirits or, or fallen angels or whatever. He says, but I have come. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, but not just life, have it more abundantly. I think one translation says, in abundance to the full until it overflows. This is what he said. He said, not just life and not just abundant life, but more abundant life. I find it interesting how in John 10, 4, just a little bit before that statement, he said that my sheep hear my voice. They hear my voice and they follow me and the voice of a stranger they will by no means follow. I think they might be very well linked to hear his voice and to receive his abundant life, right? So we know that Jesus desires us to have life. Pardon me a second here. <clears throat> I need Mr. Sophisticated Owl to give me a fine drink of liquid. So he's come for us to have life. And I'm certainly all for success in life. You know, we say uh, occupy, you, have, you might have heard about occupying the seven mountains of influence in society. Well, I say, and you might have also heard about Occupy Wall Street. We've all heard that. That was a big thing for a while. Occupy Wall Street, you know, in a sort of a, a counterculture, anti-big bank thing. <clears throat> well, I say we have in the church, the body of Christ, we have a movement called Occupy Earth. In Luke 10, 19... In the parable about the ten servants, Jesus said to occupy, said to the servants, occupy until I come. And I don't think that word is to like take over ground, but it says to be involved in business. Go out there and work with the gifts, the talents I have given you. And he expected increase in that, right? Success until he returned. Also in Daniel's vision about the Colossus, you know how it wasn't, his vision, I think. It was actually the the king's vision, and Daniel recounted it. And he saw a stone. It was the big colossus with the gold and the silver and the bronze. But then he saw a stone cut without hands that smashed the feet of the colossus, the feet and the legs, and turned it to dust. And the whole colossus turned to dust as the stone filled the earth. It grew into a great mountain that filled the entire earth. Well, I would say that is occupying you want to talk about occupy earth. The stone occupies the earth in that. Well, the stone is the body of Christ growing and occupy. I'm not talking about occupying like an army and, you know, we're marching and we're elbowing people out of the way. No, occupying by operating in the power of God in real life, in all of our life. So we're occupying the earth not with carnal or political wranglings. And that's really what it comes down to. Are we talking about success? You know, in life, are you failing? Well, we don't want to fail or suffer or just survive, or just get by. We want to thrive. But are you looking to thrive through the world's methods, through carnal methods, through through getting the latest uh, book, the latest fad, the latest, uh, who is it, Dave Ramsey, that was one that was big, and the lean processes and pyramid schemes have come and gone. There's all sorts of methods. And some of them take methods from God, and that's good. Some of them learn from what God has said, and that's good to implement. But others just learn how to manipulate a system, learn how to play the stock market, how to ride the waves of, of buying and selling. Well, if the Holy Ghost is leading you, that's fantastic. 
But if you're just going to follow the world and say, put a little cross on top of your head and say, well, it's for Jesus that I'm following the ways of the world and succeeding. Maybe we should reevaluate what we're thinking. We're not talking about occupying through carnal means, through political means. We're not talking about occupying through, uh, through elbowing people out or stepping on others. We're talking about occupying by faith in Christ, by the ways of God, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, I have not given you a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, dunamis, dynamite power, the love of God, that same love that sent his son to die for us, and a sound, self-controlled, occupying mind. Amen. Be blessed.